Good evening. I am so happy to be here to, uh, to tell this kind of very personal story of how my father avoided bankruptcy during the recession of 1990. How many of you all remember the 1990 recession? Half of all the printers up in the DC area actually went out of business. That's how awful it was. Daddy had started a company in 1960 with my mother. It was a publishing company. And they had made it all the way through um, up until 1990. Now, it, things did go up and down. But 1990 came and everything just stopped. It was, it was terrifying. And at that time, I was an army wife living over in West Germany. We were stationed in, in Nuremberg. And I get a phone call from my daddy about 3 in the afternoon and said, he said, Marjorie, I need to borrow $10,000. That gave me an instant tummy ache. I said, what, what's going on? Um, he said, well, we're having a little bit of a cash flow problem. I said, you know what, Daddy? Sam's getting ready to go to the first Gulf War. And why don't I just come home? He's going to be gone for a whole year. So I ended up um, packing up my two-year-old and two screaming cats and getting on Pan Am and flying over to Dulles. And he was there to pick me up. And on the ride home, I, I found out how really bad the, the business was. It, it wasn't $10,000. It was much, much more. So I essentially spent the next two months going through all the piles of paper, all these invoices that people had, had sent us, um, you know, overdue, action taken, all, you know, red ink all on everything, lean, suing. It was, it was overwhelming. And I remember one night being at, at his office, and it was, we had moved down to an industrial complex, and it was a great big plate glass window, and, and I just fell to my knees, and I said, God, you have to help me. This is, this, this is beyond anything I could possibly handle. And um, <laughs> I, I remember looking up and seeing the plate glass window, and I realized there's not even a sign <laughs> with the name of the company on there. I said, well, OK, that's a good first sign. <laughs> I need some more signs, though. <laughs> um, so we ended up, um, I ended up reaching out to a lot of people. And one of the first groups I reached out to was SCORE. Who's heard of SCORE? It actually used to stand for Service Corps of Retired Executives, and now I call it Service Corps of Ready Executives because not all of us are retired. But that's an organization that, that you can tap into, and they mentor small businesses for free. And there's 13,000 of us across the United States. So this wonderful man, um, I don't remember his name, but I met this SCORE counselor at the Chamber of Commerce, and, and I sat down with him, and before I even sat down, I started to cry. I was like, it's so awful. And he calmed me down, and he had a very nice presence about him that everything was going to be OK. But he did, however, suggest that I talk to an attorney. And we had to prepay to go talk to the attorney, because we were so far in debt with everybody that when we went in and we sat down with, with this nice attorney. He was this, in this beautiful old Victorian house in Old Town Alexandria. Um, and he looked at all these financials I had put together. I mean, it was very crude how I put it together. I put together a cash flow. Where's Margie here? Yeah, I did this. this, this um, it was before Excel. So anyhow, I, I showed him that we owed this much money and we had this much coming in. And he said, well, so you're here to talk about going bankrupt. And I said, yep. And my daddy really was totally against it. But I mean, you see the numbers, you know. Let me tell you, put it this way. We had already lost the family home. We had lost the car. We tried to sell all the furniture. Daddy was in his late 50s, early 60s. He lost his health insurance and was just diagnosed with prostate cancer. I mean, it was. Business hell. I don't know how else to say it. It was, it was horrible. <clears throat> and the guy said, well, yes, you can declare bankruptcy, but you still owe back payroll taxes. 
That's not excusable. And that was in the thousands of dollars. So we had no choice. We had to learn how to market. And I remember patting my, my, dad's, <laughs> my dad's knee and saying, Daddy, we just, we've got to market. Here we go. We're going to do it. We have no choice. You're kind of too old to get a job. Um, everything, we've lost everything. We just have to market. So one of the first things I did when I got back, um, my, we, we had to let go of the other employees, of course. You know, cut, 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 cut. So then it was just my, my two brothers, my dad, and me. And I remember saying, come here, I want everybody to huddle up here. I want to tell you something really important. And I really feel like what I told them really set the ground and the tone for turning around the business. Um, because people would come in and they'd say, how's business? And my brothers and my dad would say, oh, it's terrible. I said, don't say that anymore. Who wants to do business with somebody who's failing? It's scary. I mean, you could drop off your, your work and, and they might close by the end of the day. We were talking about that earlier today. Setting the attitude was, was really important. And I would catch them. I would say, uh-uh. <laughs> I, was the, I was the oldest sister, so I could be bossy like that. Um, and unfortunately, my mother had died years ago. So, you know, I, I got to be sort of mom. So anyhow, um, that was one of the first things. The next thing we did was create a postcard campaign. Now, today, people say, OK, you can buy 40,000 names, and you know it's going to cost this much money, and this printing, and that. Guys, we didn't have any money to do marketing. So remember Yellow Pages? I looked in the Yellow Pages, and I picked out the tw top 20 associations that were close to my father's print shop, wrote them down, and created this direct mail campaign to just 20 of them. And do you know, we got every single one of those associations. They all became clients because I stalked them, number one. <laughs> every single Monday, <laughs> every single Monday, I would send out a postcard. And at the very end, do you remember those old punch out Rolodex cards? That, that was the very last thing that I sent. And I said, by the way, I'm going to be calling you because I would. I want your business. I was that desperate. I want your business. You got to be doing business with us. So I got in. We started. I remember the first one was National Tank Truckers Association, NTTC. I can't remember what the C stands for, but um, they wanted us to do some mailing. I was like, sure, we do mailing. <laughs> we didn't, but we figured out how to do it. <laughs> That, was, that w has been a huge account for us ever since. I mean, and we outsourced all of that. But um, I, I just I crossed my fingers and came back and said, I got our first one if we can do it. So it became like a, a, a personal challenge. So anyhow, um, that, was, that direct mail campaign was, was really significant. And I have to tell you that I didn't use, um, we didn't put the, the campaign on the press because I we couldn't even buy paper so I had to find scrap paper put it through the laser printer cut it out and mail it coming from a printer my dad's like you can't do that I was like yes we can <laughs> we're gonna do it and and it worked it, to it totally worked um, the other thing that we did was I had to really reposition my dad's tagline. And if I ask anybody in here, if you can say what you do in one sentence that's repeatable in the community, you're on the right track. Like Margie, you're, you're an accountant, right? Or you're, yeah, I mean, that's easy to say. What scares me is when small businesses come up and I say, so what do you do? This is a bad sign. Well, we do a lot of things. That's not a good sign because it, the messages, there's so many messages out there that do you think the public can remember, well, we do so many things? No, they can remember one thing. And with, the, with today and the internet, you better be able 
to say, to have one concise tagline for your keywords. Can you imagine typing in on Google, well, we do everything? No, you're not going to be found online. You have to do Pembroke accounting. Are you coming up online? Now, this is all before the internet, but these same principles apply. You've got to know your, your keywords. You've got to know, have a one sentence, repeatable tagline. And to me, that's one of the most, you know, a lot of companies will also have taglines. Like, we're the most service-oriented quality. What is that? I mean, you know, that's not what you do. So like if you're at a dinner party or a cocktail party, somebody needs, you, you'd be able to repeat it in the community. I do accounting in, in Pembroke. I do, you know, something that easy. So be thinking about that. That was a huge turning point when we finally decided that Daddy was going to be printers for associations. Um, I call it the golden tagline. It was three words. It was, it was beautiful. And when the associations found out that that's all we concentrated on, it, it was even more confidence in, in, in working with us. In fact, we still did printing for hospitals and vets and accountants. We did all that, but we put our flag in the sand for associations. Number one, th they paid very well. Number two, our presses were set up for it. And um, there was a very good profit margin. So that was the other thing. I don't think they really understood what printing costs. So you really got to analyze, you know, how much is the paper? How much is, I mean, you really, I, wouldn't you say that's one of the number one small problem with business owners? They really don't understand the true cost. So, um, so that was another turning point with coming up with this wonderful tagline. I would say that my biggest secret weapon with turning around my, my dad's company is public relations. It, is, it was so powerful for my father and, and turning this company around that I ended up starting my company years later doing it because I saw the power of it. Um, Daddy's business was going to be cel celebrating 30 years and I said, wow. Um, I remember I went to the University of Maryland and I majored in journalism communications and I said, I I remember my teacher talking about writing a press release and you know if you have good news it's something the media will will print so I got on the phone I called the Washington Times and I I told them that my father's company will be celebrating 30 years and she said oh that's something we'd like to write about we'll be out next week oh, you're kidding so she came out with a photographer, and she wrote a story, and she, she took a picture of us, and the story was glowing. She actually talked to our three remaining clients, and they gave us glowing reviews. <laughs> I mean, we didn't lie. We didn't lie at all. But when this article came out, it came out at the same time that I was doing the direct mail campaign, and they would say, Oh, yeah, I read about you. It was instant credibility. Public relations can make or break your reputation. And if you know how, what kind of news to put out, what kind of information to put out, you can turn a business around. We did not do one bit of advertising turning Daddy's company around. It was all with PR. Um, I mean, we, did, we had to change the tagline, and we did some direct mail with the, with, the, um, with the postcards. But this was the secret weapon. This is what they, they said, OK, we'll give you a try because of this. I mean, I'm, so what I learned from that is um, I now tell our clients that, I, actually, I gave everybody a sheet of paper here. If you're a small business owner, you should be sending out one press release a month talking about your good news, whether it's a celebration of your anniversary, or if you've hired somebody new, or if you have new technology. The newspapers want this information. 
and it's free. If you, and I've talked to all the, the reporters, they said even if you write, a, you know, you think of the press releases and it's all, you know, it's all formally done. They said, tell everybody, even if they do, who, what, where, when, why, and how, they'll accept it. So why wouldn't you do that? Every single month, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of put a spell on you right here. I'm going to say, if the Monday comes around, the first Monday of every month, and you're not putting out a press release, you're leaving visibility and marketing on the table, which is free. And what, what's even more powerful is if you get this article on, like in the Savannah Morning News or in the Statesboro Herald or what's the newspaper in Pembroke? Or the Bryan County News, guess what? It ends up online. So guess what? If somebody's thinking about doing business with Margie and for a CPA and they, they read that she's been giving a lecture or she's you know, volunteered in the community or she's donated money, and if they have the same values that line up, there's a better chance that somebody's going to do business with her. So this online world is, it's a really, we're really fortunate because you can tell your story the way it needs to be told right now. And how many of y'all use YouTube, which is my favorite? YouTube, yep. It's the number two search engine. So when we position our clients as the authority and we get them speaking, we videotape it. And then we put it up online. And then people find it. And there's lots of free information out there. That, and people that are looking for your types of services, they're going to put in those keywords, find it, and you know what? You're going you're to get new clients that way. So this online world is, um, I really challenge you all to be there because that's where it's going. I mean, we're still submitting press releases to the Savannah Morning News, but really they have Google alerts. I don't really even need to email them anymore. They just pick it up online. It comes in as a Google alert. So. There, there's a lot of different things, and let me get my notes because I'm just, there's a lot of different things that you can do to, to turn a company around. And this type of stuff is just really to thrive. It's not even just to survive. It is to thrive. Um, so I'm talking about all, this thing, all these things that I was doing with marketing. Another thing that I learned, one of the, the last ones that I learned, number five, was the power to negotiate. And I would be, I mean, we were sifting through all these bills, and I had to call everybody and say, look, we're trying to avoid bankruptcy. If you don't accept, like, let's say the bill was $6,000 for some paper, if you don't accept $25 a month, we could close the office. And we had 220 some people that we owed money to, and all of them accepted a lesser amount. I didn't know I could do that. So I learned that. And, th and then the real big challenge was when the IRS called. And they said, we want $5,000 a month in back payroll taxes. Get my smelling salts. <laughs> we weren't even billing that at that time. But you know what? I was very honest with him. I called him back. His name was Mr. Washington, and I said, this is, what, this is what's happening. Here's my you know, Excel spreadsheet. We've gone from 50000 a month down to 3000 a month. Looking back on it, I, I don't know how we made it through. But you know what? He worked with me, and I said, here's my little spreadsheet. We can pay $200 a month back to start with, and then the next month we'll pay two fifty. dollars And the, he said, if you miss one payment, we're closing you down. So we never missed one payment. And the year I moved down here, we completely paid off the IRS. We negotiated. I mean, it was, it was, I got chills just, just remembering it. Because, I mean, you talk about scary, yes. But you know what? We had lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> not, not much more they could have taken. So we're, you know, I also learned that I could negotiate a move. So I got out of that 
that building that he was in and we actually moved to, to even more of a warehouse space and I said, hmm, it worked for the IRS. I said, okay, we'll move here if you pay for the move and you build it out with all the 220 electricity and you give us April free for five years. Fine. I said, ooh, I should ask for more. <laughs> so the power, you can negotiate. I didn't know any of these things. And you guys are all seasoned business owners. You probably knew all that. But I didn't. I had to learn all that the really hard way. And um, I'm actually writing a story about those years because I remember my brother used to say, I just want to win the lottery. That's all I want to do is win the lottery. And he'd play the lottery and play it. And I said, John, you know what? All these lessons that we have learned, you're not if you win the lottery, you're still going to make these mistakes again. So I look at it as a blessing that we never won the lottery that way. But what I really feel like is I did win the lottery because I've lived through business hell. I know what to expect. It gave me the confidence to start my own business. I now am president of SCORE which is this wonderful organization, and we mentor small businesses across the United States. That, that man, I can't even remember his name, but that man helped my father's company out so much that I'm just paying it forward. And I really encourage all of you to either get a mentor or be a mentor, because um, the small business community is rough. It's really rough. It's not, it's not an easy um, line of work. But when we're all helping each other, and I reached out and asked a lot of people, you can move forward. Things can really happen. And that's my talk. So thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Is the business still going? Yes, the business is still going. Still yeah, my, unfortunately, my father died about five years ago. He, he came down to live with me the last six months of his life and under hospice care. And I won Entrepreneur of the Year and Chris was filming it. And um, I dedicated the award that I won to my father who was in the audience. And he captured this wonderful video that it's, it's actually up on, on my YouTube. It, it was phenomenal. And, and he died two weeks after that. But it, it, was, it was such a, a nice way to end. So yes, it's still going. And in the name of my company, I named my company after my father's company, um, Carriage Trade, which means high-end clientele. Um, I probably wouldn't have done that knowing what I know now <laughs> for keywords. And, and um, just because I, <laughs> I was telling him back there, I said, everybody thinks I'm a tour company. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not a tour company. I sound like it, and my logo looks like it. So I'm going to be switching logos. and. You're a logo designer. <laughs> so anyhow. So Marjorie, what do you think about Facebook? Do you need to be on, we need to be on Facebook? Do you need to be on Facebook? Yes. It, it, what you first need to do is come up with a strategy of what you want to communicate to the public. What do you want them to think of you as? And when you do that, you then set up different sites. You've got your YouTube, you've got your, your Facebook, your Twitter. You know, everybody's different. You, you, you really would have to do an assessment on that. But um, there's very creative ways that can drive traffic to your website and increase your sales, absolutely. You don't want to be on there saying, today I took a bath. <laughs> My cat went upstairs. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want to say, hey, by the way, I'm speaking at wherever. Or, hey, by the way, we won an award. You know, have a conversation. There's a lot of really good strategies. And I've actually done a couple of YouTubes that are up online, if you Google Marjorie Young, um, talking about the 10 different ways to increase your visibility online. Don't be afraid of it. Really jump in and embrace it, because it, it's, that's where it's going. It's really going in that direction. So. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.